on its next cycle. First I'll move it in, I've been taking 5,000 per pass. Now you see the y-axis and the rotary axis are both moving at the same time. Therefore, the y-axis is moving in and out to it generates the shape. An index is over to the next cam, resets to zero. And by resetting the zero with a G92, it allows you to use the same formula and it, uh, the uh, G code for each cam. It goes over there. The index is in. I always start grinding on the, the heel of the, of the cam because the, the critical shape is at the, at the top of the load. So we want a good uh, continuous grind on the at the top of the load. So we're coming to the end of the first pass here. And it'll go back over here. It'll reset itself. So I grind the rest of the cable now. Start moving there. the second pass. Now you, you have to remember the difference between this and uh, most cam makers the different kinds that have been made over the years. And this cam is being generated from the cab, a CAD drawing, or it can also be generated from a lift table in a program uh, like Excel or some kind of spreadsheet. In other words, you put the angle in and the lift, and the program itself will, will fill in a curved line because of the algorithm that was used. It will be a series of flat points if you do it that way. And if you do it at about every one or two degrees, it'll, it'll generate a nice shaped cam. Getting close to the end here. Yeah. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is press the wheel, take a couple of passes on it. I'm going to move in the y-axis two thousandths of an inch because that's what I dressed off the, the wheel with the diamond so that evens it up. I'm going to take about a three thousandth pass and measure it one more time. Because we're getting pretty close to the end. Oh, here we go again.
tricky part of writing a cam program is the tip of the load doesn't grind on center except that top dead center. So it comes in from the bottom of the wheel and starts hitting it. The Y axis has to pull out to, to generate this shape and then it, as it goes over the top it has to feed back in. But the dimension isn't a straight dimension because it, the, the diameter of the grinding wheel has to be considered when you're writing the equations of, uh, to generate a cam load from the CAD drawing, which is what the hard part of this was. The machine took me about Oh, a day, day and a half to build. But before I got a program I really liked, it wasn't done full time. It took close to three years to develop the software to generate the program. But how long did it take to run that from start to finish, would you say? A couple hours? Yeah, probably. And that's the finished deal. This little fuzzy you see on the edge will come right off with a, your fingernail. It's, see, like right there? It's just where it overlapped it. If you look down the end there, you can see the curve of the cam on the lobe. This one's the exhaust. And this one here is the intake, which is a lot sharper. Anyway, that's how we do it.